you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hi guys, welcome back to another FIFA 21 Tactics video. It's Brummer here as always. Thanks for joining me again. And this time around, we are switching our focus to another league in another country that we haven't actually covered in our tactics series. If you're new to this series, this is where we recreate and adapt real life systems in FIFA 21 so that they'll work as effectively and replicate the system as effectively and mirror-like uh, in-game. Uh, we've went through lots of different tactics uh, since we began this began the series, but um, we have not yet covered a team from the French Ligue 1. So this is a this is a bit of new territory for us today. We're looking at the AS Monaco team of the 2016-2017 season of Leonardo Jardim, uh, the team that made a lot of waves. Of course, not only beating PSG to the Ligue 1 title, but also in the Champions League as well. Uh, eventually reaching the semi-final with a lot of memorable matches on the way. It was a really, really enjoyable team and it has since changed a lot. As you can see here, the personnel, very, very different. The only player we've got remaining from that um, you know, sort of set of teams is uh, is Sidibe, really. Uh, Badi Ashile and, and Bayo Tori, I think, were also there, but not really an ever-present in the team. Um, so... It's, it's much changed. It is much changed. And I should probably start this with uh, a disclaimer as well. You know, if you are going to try this system, please, please do not try it with this Monaco team. If you are going to start a Monaco career mode, for example, then make sure you sign 9, 10 new first team players. Because it's just so... Um, What's the word? It's so poor for the system. The, 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 the personnel doesn't match the system at all. You know, there needs a lot of changing anyway. I don't think I've played with a team less suited to one of these tactics in these videos. I remember last year we covered uh, Inter Milan, um, the Jose Mourinho Inter Milan system. And of course we did into the, the current Inter team to show the tactic. And the team was just not suited at it, at it for it at all. And I told you guys then not to use Inter Milan for that tactic. This is worse. I can tell you right now, this is worse. Now the game that you see on the side, we do win. But... It was just a real slog to play with. The, the centre-backs are too slow. There's not enough energy in the team. They're not suited to some of the roles. There's not enough pace, particularly up front as well. Um, not enough stamina-wise from the, the full-backs in particular. So, um, you know, yeah, there is a lot of issues. But um, other than that, the tactic itself can leave you exposed. But if you get the right signings, you play um, correctly, you know, you could have a lot of fun with it for sure. It's a very, very attacking system. Um, so, what we're going to start off with, I'll show you a couple of position changes that we do make. Then we'll move on to the tactics overall of the system. Then we'll finish off with the play instructions and I'll show you suitable signings to make along the way. Um, so, first off, let's start with the squad. Now, of course, very attacking system. This was open, expansive, high tempo, high intensity, um, and that's what you're trying to replicate as much as possible in this system so there's two position changes overall first off what i want to show you is the formation we go with the 442 holding so you'll have two central defensive midfielders rather than two central midfielders you want that to give you that balance and that protection as much as possible and the two position changes we've got is the fullbacks so we're going to move these from left back and right back to uh right wing back and left wing back just so they get further forward um they're expansive very wide as well you know you're going to see in the tactics shortly the team will be more narrow in terms of how it builds up and when it's in possession you're going to want the fullbacks to create as much width as possible um, because then you've got that balance between attacking narrow to give lots of short passing options and then getting the ball out wide and exploiting the space that you've created with that width so that's it for the uh player positions now we can move on to the tactics so first off, defensively, 
uh, we've got constant pressure, and that's what you're going to see a lot from this uh, sort of Monaco setup. Uh, an extreme sort of pressing tactic, working constantly to try and win the ball back. Uh, and it's not also a case of you know they win the ball back and then they're patient in possession. It's high tempo all the time, and that's why sometimes you are going to have to rest in possession. You have to use um, if you see my stamina tutorial. If not, do go and check that out, um, and you'll see that you can able to sort of play at that high tempo whilst um, you know preserving stamina as much as possible. Defensively, width very, very narrow. Because you're playing a 4-4-2, there's going to be a little bit more gaps, particularly in those midfield areas. So you want to try and narrow them as much as possible, create as less space as possible for the opposition. They've got to try and play around you instead um, and try and whip block cross into the box that way. And depth, we have this on eight. So they obviously played a high line to complement that press and to play on the front foot. But we don't have this on 10. We have this on eight instead, purely just to adapt to the game a little bit, to give your defenders a little bit of leeway. They can drop off a little bit. Um, and it just offers you slightly more protection against runs in behind over the top three walls, etc., which are still extremely overpowered on this game. So we have that on eight, but still retain a high line. So in possession now, offensive style, we do have possession. Now, obviously, Monaco weren't just about playing through the thirds. There's a lot of emphasis getting the ball vertically, um, just vertical passing, getting the ball forward fast as quickly as possible in certain instances. And the way we can recreate that balance between possession and counter-attack is from the, upper, well, the player instructions. So offensive style, we have possession. Then on player instructions, you'll see some of the players have uh, that sort of get in behind system and, and get forward instructions as well. So then you've got that, that nice little bit of variation there. Attacking width, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we have this on free. So yes, it is make it, making it more narrow. What you're trying to do there is you're trying to get the likes of the midfielders offering short passing options, the strikers trying to play a bit closer to each other to feed off each other when they can. But because you're playing a 4-4-2, because you've changed the fullbacks or wingbacks, you will still have width. You'll still have an emphasis on width. So it gives you a really good sort of uh, balance point there. And um, that is very, very handy indeed. With players in the box, move this up to uh, seven. For some reason, that was an eight. That should be on seven. Um, so what you'll find is you'll have three players and then one hovering in and around the area where you've got. So obviously, you've got the two strikers and maybe a winger as well coming in there. And then on top of that, you might have either one of the central midfielders or the other winger as well if one of the fullbacks are crossing. So again... You've got a good, um, you know, sort of amount of bodies in the box for those crossing situations that, that they utilise a fair often. On to corners and free kicks, what we always do in these videos, and it doesn't change here, is we move this up to four. Then it means that you have two players back still for those for those corner situations, for example. Then one on the edge of the area, which means you can deal with the counter attack from the opposition if and when it arises, but it gives you an extra body in the box um, for those set pieces. So it just gives you an extra little, um, you know, threat um, and chance to to score from those those situations. So it's very very handy. So that will round it off for the tactics. As always, guys, and I'll mention this at the end of the video as well, if you've got any questions about the tactic, do please let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you. Anything that you want to know, why we do this, or, or how to counter something, etc. Like I say, just get me in the comment section, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So now moving on to the player instructions. What we'll do is we'll start off with the goalkeeper and we'll work our way through the field, suggesting suitable players for you to sign along the way. I'll also leave my uh, favourite pick for each one as well on uh, on uh, career mode. So first off with Lecomte here, this would have been uh, Subasic in this situation. We've got him a sweeper-keeper, obviously, because you're playing a high line. So he's just giving you that extra protection. Now obviously sweeper-keeper is hit or miss on this game sometimes they don't come out when they should sometimes they do when they shouldn't but obviously you want that emphasis on the sweeper keeper to give you that extra layer of protection and we're saving on crosses we have this on comes to crosses again trying to play, be as active as possible um you know really playing on the front foot as a keeper relieving some pressure from your defenders as well when crosses are coming into the box keepers are quite overpowered in those situations so that does help on to the two centre-backs, no changes here for the uh, player instructions, but as I said early on in the video, please, please do not go with these two centre-backs if you're going to start uh, a career as Monaco, for example. Um, you have to move on from these. The, 
they just haven't got the stats in particular the pace you know so de Sassi here he has 55 pace and Badia Shile has 60 pace which you know I hate to be to talk like this because it shouldn't be necessarily like that plus I think their pace is underrated I think they're a bit quicker than that personally but on FIFA um, you know you will just get torn apart particularly when you're playing a high line it's not so bad when you're playing a slightly deeper block but with a high line, you have to have fast centre-backs. So, you know, you have to move on from these two. I'll suggest fast centre-backs in, um, in the suitable players section. Um, and, yeah, you're looking for minimum 70 pace, preferably mid to high 70s. And, and even better if it's in the 80s, someone like Costas Manalas, for example. That would be uh, pretty, pretty perfect. So, on to the wing-backs next. We've got the same roles for both of these, um, and that will be during the attack and overlap. So, obviously, as I've mentioned a few times now, the emphasis on them creating the whip as much as possible, literally on the touchline, pretty much. Um, obviously, you're looking for players with high stamina, high pace, high work rate, all of those traits on top of the um, sort of required things of crossing and marking and, and the defensive awareness, etc., um, so you're looking for that. Yeah, like I say, both of these on join the attack um, and overlap just to provide that extra support out wide. So now we're getting into the really juicy bits now. This is where things are sort of working around stuff. So we've got the midfield four. We'll start off with the two central midfielders. Now, um, here we've got Florentino Luis and Fabregas. Back then it would have been um, like Fabinho and, and Bakayoko. Um, and so you've got one player who's really the more defensive minded. He will stay back at all times. And in this case, this is Florentino uh, Luis here. We've got him on stay back while attacking and also cutting, patting, cut passing lanes as well. Um, so obviously the stay back while attacking to be that defensive midfielder. And then we've cut passing lanes. You know, man marking on this game, not very effective at all. Well, not at all. It's just not effective at all. It doesn't work. Um, particularly for the for the midfielders. So we have that on cut passing lanes to help to um, complement your press instead. And then with the defensive position, we actually have this on cover centre. So obviously you've got your two um, sort of wide men getting forward, but the reason why we have this on cover centre is, um, of course, you've only got two central midfielders, you know, not three. You don't have that extra uh, bit of protection from a third man. So you have to have this on cover centre, otherwise there's just going to be too many gaps in the centre of the field. Now you will see there is space out wide to get counted on, and that is a drawback of this system. Um, and what you've got to do there is you've just got to draw draw out one of these players if and when it comes to it manually otherwise you don't want them naturally coming out into those wide areas and even you vulnerable in the center because that's a that's a lot lot worse um and you know in terms of how dangerous it is so we have this on cover center and it will be the same for fabregas as well however the only difference here we've got him on cut passing lanes as well the difference here is that we have this on balance so sometimes he'll be getting forward not so much running in behind and, and beyond the strikers, which is not what you want, but you'll be getting into the box a little bit more, getting into those more advanced areas in certain situations, which is what you're looking for. And that was more the Bakayoko role. Lots of energy, bit of an engine, really, um, sort of getting yourself all around a pitch. And so that's what you're looking for. Like I say, Fabregas, not suited to this role at all. Um, obviously, I used it just for the sake purpose of this video because they haven't got a lot. Maybe Fafana could have done that role, but he is lower rated. But... Like I say, if you're going to play Monaco, move on from someone like Cesc Fabregas. You need someone with uh, high energy, very all-rounded, lots of um, high physical traits, etc. Um, to fit that role. So on to the wingers. We're going to start off with Golovin here, which would have been like a, a Bernardo Silva. Um, and again, it's a shame because someone like Golovin, I really rate him as a player. In fact, I think he's probably the most talented player on in the Monaco squad. Um, you know, give or take. Maybe you got Fabregas and Ben Yedder, but I, I think Golovin is the best player in that squad. But there isn't really a role for him in this system because you're really looking for that box-to-box -box player. And whilst he could really be perhaps more suited to that central role, he's not an out-and-out box-to-box -box because you don't want always want that central midfielder getting into those... Um, you know, 18-yard box situations. So, you know, I did put him on the right here because they don't have a winger who suits this role. And, and what that role is, is really more of a false winger. What Bernardo Silva did a lot was coming short, cutting inside, rather than running in behind. So that's what we're sort of replicating here with these roles. We have him on cut inside, and we have him on come short as well. Um, so he should be picking those little pockets of 
space in the in the half narrow areas. Um, we have him on comeback on defence, obviously, um, and then support and crosses stay on the edge of the box rather than getting into the box across again. Because you've got Fabregas on this side, who might occasionally get into the box, but not always, you don't want both of these guys storming into the box, because then that leaves you completely vacant on this side. So really, what we're looking to do here is complement each other with those two roles. So if Fabregas does happen to get into the box on the odd occasion, Golovin is there to cover for him by staying on the edge of the box. So that gives you that nice balance there. On the other side, though, we have here, Gelson Martins would have been maybe Thomas Lamar. Leon, he won't come back on defence as well, and also on cutting side, but this time getting behind. Uh, so obviously he's going to utilise his pace, and that's what I'm talking about with how we have a balance um, of counter-attacking and possession base. Because you've got the likes of Gelson Martins on getting behind, he will always be looking to penetrate the defensive line, penetrate the last man, running behind. So that gives you the emphasis on the counter-attack, and it's something that we did look to exploit in the gameplay on the right-hand side as well. With support on crosses, obviously different to Golovin this time. We have Mon getting to the box of the cross. You've got more protection because you've got Florentino Luis here um, who's staying back as that defensive midfielder. So then you can get him into the box and then that, that plays a part in the um, in the, the three and a half to four men in the box of crossing situations. So that will uh, finish the midfield for this. Um, so moving on to the two strikers now, Falcao and Mbappe. What a fantastic strike partnership that was. Again here... With the personnel, Volland and Ben Yedda not suited to this. As you can see, I had Volland as a target man replicating that Falcao role. You know, and he, that's just not him, is it? But I had to do it because I didn't really have anyone else. So first off, with Volland or, or Falcao, as he would have been, you want him as a target man and stay central as well. So obviously, Falcao's strengths were you know, aerial situations, playing in the 18-yard box. So that's what you're really looking for in this guy as well. People can play off him. Ben Yedda will run him behind, which we'll come on to shortly. Um, and then you've got the likes of, of Fabregas and Martins, etc., sort of playing off him as well. Um, so we have him as target man, and we have him as stay central. Whereas with Ben Yedda, who's replicating that Mbappe role, obviously you're going to have a lot more movement from him. So drift wide and getting behind. Again, emphasis on counter-attack, creating space, exploiting space, um, and that's obviously what Mbappe would do best. Ben Yedda, relatively pacey, but not pacey enough. I think you're really looking for someone, um, you know, 90s plus for that, um, with a lot, of, a lot of movement, high attacking work rate, high stamina as well. Um, to really exploit that role as much as possible because you can have a lot of joy with it. Um, you know, in particular with them guys rotating around a bit as well with Martins on cutting side and Ben Yedda on drift wide. You've got a bit of rotation there as well, which you can really play around with and get a lot of joy out of that if it works well. Um, so that is it for the player roles and in turn, it is it for the tactic as a whole. You know, it's a real shame about this. This team was, was ripped apart far too early. You know, because it, this was a really enjoyable team to watch, and they could have had a lot of success. Uh, but all of a sudden, they have that one season, and, and then they get just get ripped apart. Everyone leaves, and Bappe leaves, Bernardo Silva, Lamar, uh, Fabinho, Bakayoko, just just Falcao, just everyone. Everyone goes um, pretty soon after, if not the first season, and definitely after the second season. So it was a real, real shame um, to see that team ripped apart. And now you look at it, and it's just vastly different uh, in terms of the tactic itself. Like I say. You'll, you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it if you've got the right players because it's very, very attacking. Lots of um, movement, a high tempo and a high intensity as well. It is vulnerable in the, in the defensive phase of play and you will concede goals, particularly if you're playing online, but you will score goals as well. Um, so it's one of them you, you give and take, you know. So, um, you know, I enjoyed playing, enjoyed, um, you know, working on this tactic, certainly. I hope you guys enjoyed playing with it as well. As always, keep your suggestions coming in. Um, if you do enjoy this video and you want to see more, then please do subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications for every time I upload. Don't forget to subscribe to my second channel as well, covering uh, real life football. Hopefully, we'll be uploading back on that soon. Um, and... Give me a follow on Twitter as well. Link for that is in the description. Leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. And I know we are going to finish off there. Thank you for watching this. And until next time, I will see you soon. <laughs>